Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first On the Scene. And I have with me legendary writer Steve Englehart. Mr. Englehart, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing great. And, um, um, uh, you know, you've touched pretty much every um, uh, every comic book. You know, you've done Avengers, you've done Justice League, Detective. Uh, there, there, you have such a vast uh, uh, in, in knowledge of the industry and, um, and, and definitely are one of the builders of the mythologies um, from Captain America to, you know, Manhunters. And we're going to talk about some of those stories. But I, I wanted to ask you first, uh, tell us a little bit. I want to visualize the world of the Bronze Age through your eyes. Like, what was that world and how is it different from now? And if you don't have to go at length, but... Just kind of, I want to get a picture of what he was um, writing these stories at that time and meeting some of these other legends that um, right now um, everybody, you know, cherishes. Well, um, it was just a really magical time. I mean, it, I, and I think it comes through in the books, but there were a bunch of us who sort of grew up reading the Marvel age for the 10 years that it existed before us and the DC for the 15 years uh, before us. And then we all sort of showed up at the same time and we all really wanted to do comic books. You know, we really liked comic books and really wanted to go for it. So in those days you had to physically go to New York. There was no internet, there was no FedEx. So you needed to hand things to people and get them back. So it meant everybody in comics with one or two exceptions, really only one or two, lived in New York and, and we socialized, we met each other at the offices, we went to parties together. I mean, it was, and it was a very egalitarian group. I mean, the fact when I got there, I was the new guy, didn't matter to anybody. I was in the club because I was doing stuff. And so I got to hang out with people who were legends to me, like Wally Wood, and and Bill Everett and you know uh, Will Eisner, uh, these guys, because um, that was only thirty years from the beginning of comics in general. Now it's fifty years from there. Um, so, as a somebody who just really loved comic books, it was perfect. I mean, I knew everybody. I was doing it, um, and it was again the whole. Marvel age and its flourishingness. DC was doing its thing too. And with Dick Giordano, it got better, but people were just having a great time. And and we, we all did it sort of in the moment. I mean, there was no idea that 50 years later, wow. you know, that people would still be paying attention to it or whatever. But I think it was because we were having such a good time that people are paying attention to it, even after all. That stuff stays in print and it keeps coming around and people keep discovering it over and over again. Um, it, but bottom line, it was just a great time. It was just a bunch of young people having a great time being creative, you know? Yeah, I mean, and to to your point to what you're saying, um, uh, it's because it has heart. What you guys did then has heart. And, and oh. that has, as you said, it, uh, it has stayed to the point that generations are able to recognize the, um, you know, the, the strength of the stories and the soul of it. Um, and, you know, when I started collecting and the, uh, uh, in, in, when I was younger, uh, we were a segment of, uh, you know, there was a, a comic book enthusiast, but now everybody enjoys the stories. I have mm -hmm. a question about um, New York. Uh, it's interesting. You mentioned uh, um, I can, I can try to picture New York in the sixties and seventies. Very interesting. Where was the headquarters of Marvel at the time? I know DC was in Avenue of the Americas, right? Yeah, it's been a long time since I lived in New York, so I'm not exactly sure. I, the Marvel offices, I want to say, were like 57th and Madison, 54th and Madison, something, something in that range. Um, and it was just an office building with an office. I mean, it wasn't anything grand or... 
I mean, it was it was big enough to hold the number of people that needed to be there, but it wasn't designed or anything. It was just an office. Um, there were at the Marvel offices. There were um, me right behind me, Johnny Romita and well, Herb Trimpey were doing were on staff. They were doing their books, but they were also physically there doing art corrections and so forth. Across from me was the stat guy with a machine that probably took years off everybody's <laughs> life with the terrible chemicals that were used for photo oh stats in those days. Um, and then behind him, across from Ramita and those guys were the couple letterers and a couple colorists. In the back, there was room for maybe 10 people, artists doing corrections and doing whatever. And Stan had an office. I don't think Roy even had an office, but that was it. I mean, that's wow. that was the Marvel bullpen, wow. but it really was a bullpen because 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 people were having a good time and because it was so small, everybody was you know hanging with everybody and and um, that whole thing about the bullpen was rare, it, very very. That's, that's the origin of the, yeah. is that the origin of the okay wow. Well, I mean, I think he was, I think Stan was using the term before I got there, but I mean, I'm just saying when I got there, that's what I found, that it was just a bunch of friends, you know, good people um, enjoying doing comics, you know. What about uh, Excelsior? Uh, well, that's Stan, right? Right. Um, Stan, um, he was a showman, right? And which was a good thing, 